Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, Gidira. Engane yonde? Epidi irkerengu? Enchular? Kashi asa? Kaise ho? That's it. Thanks for coming to my TED. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> This is such a full circle moment for me to be speaking here at TEDx SAC because I was once a student at Saint Aloysius College. That's me standing in the cutte, and. <laughs> and my big dream back then was to become a journalist and maybe one day come back and speak to a small class of students and tell them what journalism is really like and uh, that's why i feel like today's theme of into the unknown is so very apt because although i did work as a journalist for a couple of years life had other plans for me and today i'm a content creator and i get the incredible opportunity to address such a lively audience uh, to talk about why regional languages are so important to today's youth and to the future of content creation we live in a land of 121 languages and 270 mother tongues but a lot of us grew up looking at english as the gold standard and i was no ex exception to it having been born a malayali growing up in karnataka I often felt at odds when it came to language and identity. At home I would speak in Malayalam with my parents, with my neighborhood friends I would speak in Tulu, while going around in the city I would speak in Kannada and on summer vacations I would happily chatter in Tamil. Now this sounds like a fantastic way to grow up and it was except for the tar of babel that resulted in my head especially during exams. I remember one Hindi exam particularly in school where I spent 15 minutes trying to remember what the Hindi word for angry was. All that came to my mind was the word desham which is the Malayalam word for it. And I couldn't write that so I was thinking desham 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 suddenly yes I got it. It's kopa. Wait, no, that's the Kannada word for it. It was then that I realized I had half the question paper left to go. and i gave up and ended up with this and that's how i passed my hindi exam <laughs> you could blame my affinity for english on growing up linguistically confused but the fact is growing up in the 90s there was a huge love for all things western you could blame it on the globalization of the economy or an explosion of american tv shows or even a lingering colonial hangover but the fact is parents were rushing to admit all their children in english medium schools and the new requisite when guests came over was beta show uncle and auntie how you speak english and so i loved english growing up because english was seen as a badge of honor a sign that your kid was destined for success and while i don't deny that knowing a language especially one that's widely known is a huge asset However in the case of English particularly it often comes at the cost of downplaying the importance of regional languages When I was growing up and I started going to school I suddenly became very conscious of speaking in Malayalam in public to my parents because Malayalam when you speak the language it has a lot of rolling l's and m's just look at the name Malayalam and a lot of kids you know when they first encounter something for the first time their instinct is to make fun of it and so um i grew up hearing a lot of kids around me saying you know how sacha speaks to her parents she says la 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 <laughs> and so you know you're at that age where you just want to fit in and so i stopped speaking malayalam to my parents in public and soon at home and what was once a tight grip on a language soon became a hazy memory but i didn't mind because in my mind english was cool and i loved english uh, despite all of the things that didn't make sense you know like how bomb doesn't rhyme with tomb about how the plural of box is boxes but the plural of ox is oxen and don't even get me started on the spellings <laughs> there are countless variations of it but if you spoke english you were cool but if you made mistakes you were suddenly the butt of all jokes like in class if you were reading and you read pageant as pregnant or pronounce champagne as champagne everybody would laugh 
And I have to admit, I was among those who laughed the loudest because in my mind, knowing English equal to being smart. I would even tell my parents, why should I learn Kannada and Hindi? I'll just manage with English. I don't need anything else. Or so I thought until I moved to Delhi for work. And suddenly, a whole new world opened up for me. Everybody around me was speaking in rapid Hindi and I was struggling to keep up. What made matters worse is I came across a lot of people who would dismiss South Indian languages as insignificant or irrelevant. It's hard to articulate that feeling of trying to justify the value of your culture. But luckily, there's a wonderful poem by Shailaja Patel titled Dreaming in Gujarati, where she talks about the experiences of her immigrant father. It says, five languages, five different worlds, yet English shrinks him down before white men who think they are flat, cold, spiky words make the only reality. That's exactly how I felt. Especially when I would come across people who would club Kannada, Malayalam, Telugu, Tamil, Tulu, everything under one language and say, don't you speak Angru, Ingru, Bingru at home? I would get so offended. But when I would try to explain the nuances of it to them, I realized that I myself didn't know that much about it. If I was so offended that someone else didn't know about my mother tongue, how much more ashamed should I feel about my own lack of knowledge about it? And that's a feeling a lot of young Indians go through when they migrate to other states for work. It's then that you turn to music and OTT platforms to try to reconnect to your, to your roots by watching all of these regional movies. And suddenly that's when you realize that your culture is actually cool. It's beautiful, it's unique, it's complex. And especially when someone praises regional cinema, you feel like you sit up a little straighter, you feel all proud. It's like those moments where you see an Indian's name in the credits of a Hollywood movie. You have nothing to do with it, but you feel so proud, like, yes, we've done it. And about around that time is when the pandemic struck. And like many young professionals, I moved back home to Mangalore. And my parents were very surprised by my newfound love for all things home. Like if my mother was making idli, I'd take a picture and say, wow, this is make you, how you make idli. Or if my father said something in Malayalam, I'd write it down immediately and say, wow, this is so interesting. Around this time that I had this newfound love for regional languages came the launch of Instagram Reels. And it seemed like a natural transition to share this newfound love through short form video content. And that's when I started the Hacks to Learn video series. Be it Hindi, Malayalam, Kannada or Tamil, I wanted to create a space where I could teach people the basic phrases from these languages to create a little more awareness about these languages and also have some fun along the way because I truly believe that learning has to be fun. And with this experience, it felt really surreal because I had gone from feeling ashamed about these languages to now helping other people learn about it and discovering a new career path for myself. Also with creating videos on social media, you have to keep creating content every single day. And with that, it really pushed me to learn more than I ever could have imagined. And with the instant feedback feature that is social media, you have to make sure you get all your pronunciations right, because otherwise you will be in a world of pain, and rightly so. It's also at this time with making so many videos across these many years, I've learned some very interesting things when it comes to regional languages and content creation. And there are three things that I'd like to share with you. Number one, most people assume that in order to be successful on social media, your content has to be either in English or Hindi. Wrong. So many content creators today are finding immense success by creating videos in local languages across different categories, be it comedy, cooking, um, automobile reviews, the list goes on. Some of them don't even have subtitles, but they rake in millions of views, sometimes even surpassing English and Hindi videos. So what changed? The audience demographic for one. Affordable access to the internet has expanded the reach of social media to beyond tier one cities. Tier two and tier three audiences are very much active on social media and are hungry to see some kind of representation of themselves on the World Wide Web. 
I see this reflected in kind of comments I receive because uh, some of them say, you know, it sounds so good to hear my mother tongue being spoken on a video online. Or even something like, uh, you said Adhika Prasanga. I haven't heard that word in so long. It unlocked so many childhood memories for me. And those are moments that are really heartwarming for me as a content creator because, let's face it, I know I'm not creating deep, profound, earth-shattering, philosophical videos. Uh, some people might even consider it cringe. But if I can help someone feel a little proud about who they are and where they come from, then that feels like the proverbial gold star. Number two, you didn't see that. <laughs> Number two, people want to learn local languages. As India opens up and you're having so many more offices opening across all parts of India, there are so many young people who are now migrating to different states. And people are realizing that it is important to learn the local language because it makes life easier. And you can avoid a lot of embarrassing situations if you also learn cultural nuances. For example, not to say the word Kundi Lagao in Kerala. For context, Kundi in Hindi means latch, but in Malayalam, it means your derriere. There is also an explosion of local language learning apps that are now making a mark for themselves in a space that was earlier dominated only by English, German, and French. Number three, as India grows global and global, there is a huge demand for regional languages as a skill set. Now, the job market in India is no longer restricted to just Delhi and Bombay. Companies are opening up a lot of regional offices and bureaus, and someone knowing the local language is a massive asset. For example, when I was one of the few South Indians in my Delhi office, and I got so many more opportunities compared to my peers just because I knew multiple languages. So I could work on projects for translations or work with multiple teams across different states. Additionally, global companies are now looking at India as a huge market and they're looking at regional languages in order to bring the audiences onto their platform. If you see a lot of the job offers now, especially in the media industry, for roles like content writers or video production, you will see that there is a requirement for regional languages. And here's yet another example. Proficiency in other Indian languages, example Telugu Malayalam, is a plus. So that has really changed the landscape in terms of what job requirements are a bonus in today's India. If I had a time machine, I would go back in time and tell myself that your culture, your heritage, and your language, they're not weaknesses or something to be ashamed of. They are your strengths because that's what makes you who you are. I wish I hadn't let others place value on it or even myself pass judgment on it, but that's okay. I have a second shot at it now. I am unlearning and relearning a lot of things. And um, especially with the fact that as a content creator, I've gotten so many more opportunities professionally while working with brands just because I know regional languages. Because very often the brief is, can you make a video that is a mixture of Kannada and English or Malayalam and English? And that has helped me create a niche for myself on a very highly saturated platform. And so to all the young people sitting here or people of any age, if you are looking at regional languages, just know that professionally, they are a huge asset. And while telling you all this about regional languages and how great they are, I do see the irony in giving this entire speech in English. But I can tell you that we are standing on the cusp of infinite possibilities when it comes to knowing regional languages. And I wish you all the very best as you hold on to it and step into the unknown. Dhanyavadagalu, Nandri, Nandi, Dhanyavad, thank you. Easy.